he would um uh he whatever his closer was like i don't know if it was the night before or the week before or whatever whatever his closing joke was which is usually your strongest you know bit you would open with that and so he did it on purpose so that he would he would force himself to write more and write better and um so really you know uh you you have to have the desire or at least for him that's the way that he was successful was that um you you just got to work that material and and uh and then you fold it over and then you start over and you start fresh uh, he's really the one for my inspiration about doing new material and just throwing the old stuff away like if you look at his career every special that he's done has been completely original and and just fucking brilliant now a lot of that is a lot of hard work and a lot of you know observation and he gets to live a really good life because of it um so and i offer that to you that's all i'm offering with this thing now in in my case and this goes back to i'm getting ready to close up here they're working on 45 minutes here in my case, um, this goes back to um, Parker Mayer, uh, the robot underground thief. Um, here I am doing something that is much greater and much larger than robotics. Uh, uh, this, this is philosophy. This is, you know, and that's, again, this is all built into the name robot underground uh, to provide a sort of a sanctuary for you robots, right? Because especially if we're in a simulation, what does that really mean? What is that? What are we? What are we? Um, but as a, as a way for you to escape tyranny and avoid things that are terrible and at this moment are prevalent in our society, and that's th that's what this is all about is 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 helping you because I. The, 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 I, I sort of discovered this on my own and uh, I uh, had I had some help again uh, follow your heart again I'm telling you remember that phrase because uh, it's gonna mean a lot more to you when I tell you that story so um, and no matter who you hear that from it's up to you of whether or not you apply it and it and it requires courage and it requires tenacity and and again uh, back to being a Boy Scout, you know, uh, trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. All those things are simply tools to help you sharpen that axe, as Tony Robbins talks about um, in his Awaken the Giant, is you got to sharpen that axe. Use your spare time to sharpen that axe so that when it's time to, to execute, uh, whether it's executing a tree or executing a, a, you know, a human. I had a conversation the other day with my wife about that about that it's always it's always important to be a quality executor um okay i'll close on this uh the the executioner that you see in like uh renaissance and all you know dark ages things like that he got to wear a mask and typically he came from another town you know and when you really get down to it everybody kind of knew who it was because you know uh whether it's a big guy skinny guy whatever you it's a small town and you kind of know who who's who but the idea was that he would wear a mask so that he had his anonymity so that he could go back to his regular fucking job. He's not just there to kill people. Like that's not his, that's not his regular job. It's like very special occasions. So, but you know, one of the things that those guys would do is you sharpen that fucking ax and you make sure that, you know, again, this is in his head where, you know, you've been practicing on wood logs you know, because you're probably a lumberjack or some sort of farmer or some sort of, you know, where you use that tool every day. And so when it comes time to execute this person, you want to do a good fucking job because if, you know, when you fuck that up, oh, that's just gross. And it's just, it's, uh, it's distracting. And, and there's, you know, you want to be good at your job. And so, you know, like, if, like, let's say you just shaved him, you like, or you got him in the back and he's like, ah, this hurts. You know, you don't, you don't want to have that. And so, of course, the French were like, let's automate this. And that's why they came up with the guillotine. But um, uh, that, that was his job. And, and if he fucked it up, it was not great. And typically, you know, he wouldn't get a <laughs> he wouldn't tip out at the end. You know, he wouldn't get a tip. So but, you know, um, it's important to be a good executioner, uh, what, no matter what it is. So for me, it's 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 fulfilling woofer dreams and being your woofer pimp. 
that's that's my job and i and i want you to be good base whores that are out there you know gathering funds and and helping people and uh you know because that's what that's what prostitutes do they help people they love people and uh um that's what I want you to do. I want you to spread the love and, but you know, you keep it secret. You can't sit there, you know, like a lot of prostitutes cannot advertise what they do, uh, you know, because of the, again, because of the situation that we're in and because of the way that the shame that society feels about love. It's so, it's so hypocritical that they, 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 they say the reason why prostitution is illegal is because love should not be sold. Right? Love is such a wonderful, high, you know, concept that you shouldn't charge for it. I'm like, okay, so let's put that in practice. Where can I find this? Well, you can find it at church, right? <laughs> right. And that goes back to control and the patriarchy and all that kind of stuff that, you know, the only noble way to go is to abstain and look for love and church and God and things like that. And that's not how we are as humans. That's, that's ridiculous. And so, you know, of course, when you look at the, the real picture, it's dudes jacking off on the bus, right? Like that San Francisco special from Dave Chappelle. That's, and they're on drugs, you know, like that's what reality is. And, and anytime you don't honor that reality, anytime you don't honor their market, it goes black. And, and so now we have a secret network of jack shacks typically run by Asians because authorities are racist and they can't tell one Asian apart from another. So like when they do an inspection, if they ever do an inspection, they probably don't because the cops go there too anyway um, for their own love. Um, you know, they go, oh, ching chong ping fong. Yep, you look like ching chong ping fong. All right, good, next next passport. And that that's the end of it. So, but uh we're all racist. Oh, there was another quote, sorry, from Sarah Silverman. Sarah Silverman, I watch her Instagram, and she was talking about um, Gary Oldman interview in Playboy that um, they had asked Gary Oldman about, who I love and adore, by the way, in The Professional. He's a fantastic, insane actor, and also in uh, the Dark Knight series, um, uh, the Batman stuff. I mean, he's all right. I mean, his best work was in The Professional, I, for me. And also in Fifth Element, he was good in that too. But anyways, uh, Gary Oldman was talking about, uh, they, I guess there was the, at the time he was talking about Mel Gibson and about, you know, will Mel Gibson ever be forgiven? And, and what Gary got really a, a f offended about was the hypocrisy of these people, that they've never been drunk, that they've never um, said things like that out loud. And of course they have. And for them not to, you know, especially when they, they you know, uh, it's weird. It's, it's when Christians don't forgive, it's like, well, that's what being a Christian is about is a forgiving. Now, when you apply it to Judaism, like Judaism is where they, they sort of like, oh yeah, we never forget. That's right. That was one of the gifts that I gave, um, Sherry's boss for Hanukkah one time was an elephant because elephants never like Jews, elephants never forget. So <laughs> it's a joke. And, uh, so, but, um, yeah, in Judaism, and, you know, because Mel said that against Jews and because a lot of Hollywood is filled with, you know, people of Judaism, they will never forgive and never forget. And it's that's crazy. And the, the biggest reason and the real reason, and, and Gary talks about this in the interview, was that Mel's, Mel's got fuck you money. And so it's, it's, hard, it's hard to go into a relationship with Mel without letting Mel call the shots. Uh, but I, 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 I see huge opportunities to, to work with a guy like that. His vision. I mean, look at his body of work. Oh my God, fucking Braveheart, dude. Oh, and you know, of course, you guys know my feelings on the uh, Road Warrior. So, but um, uh, forgive one another, love one another. There's so this 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 life is so precious and it's so feeble. There's nothing to this, right? And the universe gives zero shits about us. So. Um, uh, if you know, if you're going to pick a, a, a life to live, live the one that you have. Don't live a, one in the future or one that you don't have. Solve the problems that you can solve rather than wishing for something else. Uh, again, because that's just fantasy and it's just, it's bullshit. Um, uh, and, and that goes into religion. Like, don't, don't fucking 
you don't need to be religious in order to be a good person. Just be a good person. You know what the fuck you're supposed to do, right? Be, be kind, love one another, forgive. All the, all the radical things that Jesus talked about that nobody does today, like fucking do it. So, and remember, he also hung out with prostitutes and thugs, right? So don't be afraid to hang out with those people, you know, love them until they try to, you know, I'm sure somebody tried to get Jesus to do something he didn't want to do, you know, like do a beer run or something like that. And he's like, you know, I'm sure he stopped. And he's like, first of all, I got sandals on. And he goes like, I know Tony's on, like, I don't need to be doing this beer run. And he's like, I, and then he forgets that he can turn, you know, water into wine. So, uh, but that's how Jesus got it back on his path. And, you know, he built his own cross, you know, he's a carpenter. So, uh, happy Easter. I love you guys. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. I will talk to you later.